How do you get a drug to the right cell and ignore everything else in your body? Because when you think about it, every drug you take ends up having to float through a sea of trillions of cells. And most of them are completely healthy. So how does a tiny little molecule know exactly where to go? This is exactly where bioconjugation comes into play where we can attach drug molecules and make a chemical bond to other types of biomolecules, almost like clicking them together. And this is going to turn our drug into a targeted missile that will attack specifically only the cells of interest. And this one type of reaction, the connection between small chemical compounds and biomolecules is powering the next generation of medicine. So what is that one reaction that clicks these molecules together? Well, before we get there, let's first talk about what even is a biomolecule. When we talk about bioconjugation, we're talking about chemistry that happens on the molecules of life. Things like proteins, DNA, and even entire cells. These are the natural machinery that already exists inside your body, evolved over millions of years to recognize, bind, and react with specific targets. And that built-in specificity is why they're so powerful. Each of these biomolecules knows exactly where to find things in your body. That's how enzymes work, that's how antibodies hunt down invaders, and that's how DNA ensures that replication remains faithful. So chemists thought, what if we could harness that same precision for medicine? And that's exactly what bioconjugation does. It builds a chemical bridge between, for example, a drug and a biomolecule that already knows how to get to where it needs to go. You can think of this as giving a medicine a GPS signal that was designed by nature. So now that you know what biomolecules are, how do chemists actually make this connection? Let's start with one of the classics, amine reactive conjugations. One of the most common reagents is the NHS ester, or N-hydrosuccinamide ester. It reacts with amines like the ones found on a lysine chain or at the end terminus of proteins to form a stable amid bond. It's simple, it's effective, and it takes advantage of something proteins naturally have, lots of amine functional groups. But since there's so many amine functional groups, sometimes you might want a little more control. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about some of the other effects effective bioconjugation strategies. But first, let's talk about what actually makes an effective bioconjugation reaction. There are four best practices that chemists should keep in mind when designing new strategies. Number one is chemoselectivity. Number two is regioselectivity. Number three is that the kinetics should be fast. And number four is the linkage stability. First, chemoselectivity. That means that the reaction only targets one type of functional group and ignores all the others that are common in biology, like amines, alcohols, or thiols. If your reagent reacts with everything, it's useless in a cell. Second is regioselectivity. Even if you're targeting the right kind of group, you still want to control where on the molecule the reaction happens. Third, the kinetics need to be fast. In biological systems, concentrations are tiny, nanomolar or less even. So the reaction has to go to completion quickly before the reagents get degraded or diffused away. And finally is linkage stability. Once that bond forms, it has to stay formed, even in the presence of water, enzymes, or reducing agents inside a cell. Unstable linkages can hydrolyze, exchange, or even break apart, and that's a deal breaker for any drug conjugate. Another really cool example utilizes organometallic chemistry in the form of olefin metathesis. This is another example of a Nobel Prize winning reaction in which you use a ruthenium catalyst to stitch together two peptides that contain alkene unnatural amino acids. After completion, you're left with this alkene and you have both of the peptides attached to one another. This is a commonly employed tactic in the formation of what are called stapled or macrocyclic peptides. And that's where the thiol malamide chemistry comes in. You see, this reaction targets thiol specifically, which are found on the amino acid cysteine. And those are much rarer than lysines in different proteins. That makes this reaction site selective, where you can target one cysteine instead of dozens of lysines. It's a beautiful reaction, clean, specific, and mild enough for biological conditions. Of course, every reaction has its trade-offs. In particular, the NHS ester is actually unstable in aqueous conditions, and remember biomolecules thrive in mostly water, which means that when you introduce water, you can actually decompose this NHS ester bond in the presence of water, and this is going to produce a brand new carboxylate which is not going to undergo any further reactions. And what's more, while the thiol malamide reaction is incredibly fast and super useful, this is actually a reversible reaction that can go either in the forwards direction to make your product or your bioconjugate, but it can also go in the reverse direction via a reverse Michael addition. So while these reactions work, they're not always bioorthogonal, meaning they can interfere with other reactions happening inside of living 
underlying systems. So chemists asked the question, what if we could make these bonds fast, specific, and permanent? even inside of living systems. And that question gave rise to one of the biggest revolutions in chemical biology, the development of what's known as click chemistry, which was also awarded a Nobel Prize. It started with the copper catalyzed reaction between an azide and an alkyne, forming a triazole ring. This reaction is fast, high yielding, and produces a bond that's basically bulletproof. It's the chemistry equivalent of snapping Lego bricks together. Simple, reliable, and clean. But there's a catch. Copper is toxic to living cells. So while this reaction is perfect for the lab bench, it's not ideal for living systems. And that's where Carolyn Bertozzi and her team changed everything. They developed a copper-free version called strain-promoted click chemistry, where the alkyne is built into a strained ring, like a molecular spring, so it reacts without needing any metal catalyst. You see, alkynes, or carbon-to-carbon -carbon triple bonds, are what are known as SP hybridized. So at each of these carbon positions, they are SP hybridized. And SP hybridized carbons like to take on a bond angle of 180 degrees. However, being locked into this cyclic system prevents those carbons from achieving that 180 degree bond angle, and that makes it a very strained and thus very reactive system. And that simple innovation of using strain rather than a metal to perform this reaction allows for us to use click chemistry inside of living systems. So now that we've got a reaction that's fast, clean, and can be performed inside of living systems, what can we do with it? One of the most powerful uses is in antibody drug conjugates, or ADCs. Imagine attaching a potent cancer drug to an antibody that already knows how to find tumor cells. The result is a guided missile that delivers the drug only where it's needed, sparing healthy cells. Click Chemistry made this possible, reliable, precise, and clinically viable. But it's not just about treatment. Scientists also use click reactions to make imaging probes, or fluorescent molecules that can light up specific proteins or cells inside the body. It's like turning on a molecular flashlight to watch biology in real time. Click chemistry also builds the materials that hold biology together. Think hydrogels that mimic tissue, polymer coatings on implants, or nanoparticles that deliver medicine directly to your bloodstream, all assembled through click reactions. It's wild to think about, but this simple concept of making molecules click together has actually reshaped modern biochemistry. It's how we tag, deliver, track, and even build new life-inspired materials. And remember that question from the beginning, how does a drug know where to go? The answer lies in this chemistry, the ability to guide molecules to exactly the right target thanks to one elegant reaction. From the first amide bonds to Bertozzi's click chemistry, we've learned to build precise connections between chemistry and life itself. It's a reminder that sometimes the most powerful innovations aren't about creating something new, but finding a way to connect what's already there. If you like chemistry videos, I have a playlist here that you can check out. And if you like these types of videos, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out. I'll see you next time.